Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be discussing a few different topics when it comes to transfer news for Chelsea. Um, before we get into it though, I'd like to ask you if you could all leave a like on this video. If you're new around here and you enjoy the video, please leave a subscribe and all that good stuff. But let's start off with Chelsea ready to give up Kane and Haaland transfer chase after making contact with Star. Now, immediately I hear that headline and I'm like, no, Chelsea giving up on Haaland is the main one. I do think Kane would be amazing if we signed him, but I just don't think there's any realistic chance of that happening. Obviously, with his Tottenham links and Daniel Levy, notoriously hard to deal with, even if you're not Chelsea. So us trying to get him, we all know the Modric situation. So Kane, to me, is just it's never happening. We should forget about it. Haaland, however... I, I'm just, in my opinion, we need to be paying, you know, a realistic, but whatever Dortmund want to get Haaland, because one club is going to pick him up in the next year or two, and possibly, you know, this year it seems like they're more open to selling Sancho than Haaland, but, you know, someone's going to pick him up, they're going to pay a lot of money, and they're going to have a top striker for the next decade or so, so I think it's worth us going for him this summer and trying to get him but to hear that we're giving up is not great it says Chelsea boss, uh, boss Thomas Tuchel is desperate to sign a striker in the transfer window we know that we need a striker you know Timo Werner is just not cutting it he's not prof uh, prolific enough and it's going to cause us problems we can still keep him at the club he can be a second in command he could play as a sort of second striker he could certainly play as a winger or a cam as we're currently using him as well so there's options here but the striker that we are apparently interested in is Robert Lewandowski and as you can see here Chelsea have made contact with Bayern Munich star Robert Lewandowski with a view to convincing him to sign in the transfer window and the article goes on to mention about you know us wanting to bring in a top top striker and wow if we were to go and get Lewandowski that would be amazing he's 32 I believe if we look further down into this article it says he's scored 47 times this year, including 40 in 28 appearances in the Bundesliga. Now, the quality not as good as the Premier League, but it's not crazily far off. And I think he'd hit 30 plus, I'd hope, um, in the league would be amazing. You know, 20 plus is considered a good season. But someone like Lewandowski, experienced, knows how to play. He plays in the Champions League. You know, he's doing it against opposition of top tier. It's not like it's you know PSG players in in their league where they can dominate week in week out and hit insane numbers he's doing it in the Bundesliga which as I said not too far off the Premier League not as competitive um, and I think Lewandowski has shown that he's more than capable of playing at any level he is 32 but that apparently isn't an issue for Roman Abramovich he's not against bringing in someone of that age so that's you know if Roman's fine with it if Tuchel wants him I'm absolutely fine with it it does bring into question, you know, a fee, how much are we talking to get Lewandowski if we're going to be paying, I don't know, for a 32-year-old, you got to think, say we could, you know, Thiago Silva's 36 and he's currently, you know, he's at the end of his career and he doesn't have to sprint as much as a striker would, especially in the Premier League. Would Lewandowski be still good at 35, 36? Maybe. So let's say we get two or three years out of Lewandowski is he worth 50 plus million are we talking below 30 million i don't know it's a really hard thing to gauge because when you see his numbers and we know how good of a player he is you think you pay anything for that like you'd pay the same amount that you're going to pay for a harry kane a, a harland or a mbappe but then when you consider his age he really is a depreciating asset and we wouldn't be selling him on for anything i imagine he would either retire at chelsea or he'd go on to you know leave to go to China or the MLS or something just to have another season of a bit of a, a bit of a payday but also experiencing a new league um 32 I think if if we could get him for below 50 million I think it would be worth doing again I don't know how to judge the situation I could be way off saying 50 million I'm intrigued to see what you guys think you know do we pay upwards of 50 million for, for Lewandowski or do we get go under that is he worth 30 million at his age is he worth 80 million I honestly can't judge it so let me know what you guys think on that one but I would be happy to bring Lewandowski in at the moment you know we know we need an experienced striker someone who's just going to put the ball in the back of the net 
With Haaland, you still get that, but you also get the youth side of him. But if Dortmund aren't going to sell for anything other than like 150 million or 130 million, something crazy, then I can understand us going for someone like Lewandowski. So I'm fine with this one. Let me know what you guys think on this one. The next topic that we have got then is Chelsea open talks with ideal long-term Thiago Silva replacement. We know he's he's old, he's 36 I believe, so we're going to have to bring in someone to replace him over the next couple of seasons. You know, it looks like he's going to be staying on for another season, we'll extend his contract, but after that I imagine he would be done at our club. Um, and that replacement is, and I'm not too familiar with him, if we take a look here, the Wolfsburg defender Maxence Lacroix, I think is how you pronounce that. He's 21 year old centre back and he has been a huge presence at the back um, for Wolfsburg, who have already secured Champions League football for next season in the Bundesliga. So they've had a good season. Uh, he only arrived last year and already looks like one of the best defensive prospects in Europe. Um, we also, you know, when, when I hear that a player arrived like a year ago and we're looking to sign them, I always think we're either paying a hell of a lot of money for this or it's just not going to happen. Then you consider the Edward Mendy situation. I believe he was only at Ren for a year before we came in and signed him. And of course they paid a small fee. We then went and paid a good chunk of cash to get Edward Mendy. And for them, you know, it's a good deal. They basically, they thought they were going to keep this guy, but then they end up having him for a number of months and selling him on for a good fee. And we get a player that is a top, top talent. So I... I Looking at his numbers, it's hard to tell because you see here, Bundesliga, 28 appearances, one off the bench. Uh, he's managed one goal, one assist from, of course, the centre-back position, which isn't bad. Five yellow cards, so not a you know, crazy aggressive player. Good passing, good aerials, one per game, one man of the match performance with a 7.04 average rating. His strengths are apparently his concentration, which of course is very key, and his ball interceptions. Two things that I would say are strong in Thiago Silva, so I can understand why they're maybe comparing him that way. Um, and his style of play is he clears the ball out of defence often. And here you can see from top to bottom, as in in order of recency, some of his performances. And you can see he scored here against Hertha Berlin. And then you can see the performances are generally pretty good, not this game against uh, Frankfurt there. But other than that, above average in pretty much every game. So you got to give credit to him. He seems like a good prospect, but I'm literally going off a couple of numbers on a page here. I haven't watched him play myself. If anyone that's watching this does have more you know, analysis of uh, Maxence Lacroix, please do let me know down in the comment section. I'm sure, sure some of the other viewers as well would appreciate hearing from you. So please let us know down in the comment section down below what he's like, you know, who you'd compare him to. Is he the next Thiago Silva? Is he that calm, controlling presence in the back line, even at the age of 21 years old? Let us know. And now we're going to quickly talk about a few departures from the club. Rino Granovska makes three transfer decisions as Chelsea's 2021-22 squad takes shape. If we move further down into the article, it does go on to mention a few departures. One of those who is likely to depart is Victor Moses. He's been on loan with Spartak Moscow this season. I believe he's actually done quite well there. And it is his sixth loan spell at his time at Stamford Bridge, which isn't, you know, great. Um, and Romero, or Romano, sorry, Fabrizio Romano claims that Moses is likely to join him on a permanent deal with an agreement already reached between the two clubs. So apparently it's already happened. We just need to get the official documentation signed and such at the end of the season. And he'll be joining them on a permanent basis, assuming he's happy to do so. I imagine he is. He probably knows he doesn't have a future at Chelsea and will be happy to go there. So Victor Moses is one. The other two then being uh, Bakayoko and uh, Emerson Palmieri, which... Don't surprise me. Um, I think Alonso is possibly one that will be going as well, so we might need to recruit someone at left back or promote one of the youth. But to see uh, Emerson being the one leaving, he's better than, you know, sitting on the bench every week, getting the odd game here and there. I think Emerson's better than that. He'll do well to go to a club where he gets some regular minutes, and I think he will be a good player. Bakayoko, However, I mean, we know he never worked at Chelsea. He's had good loan spells um, out at Napoli and such, but never, ever worked for Chelsea. But it does look like he will be um, one of those uh, probably going to be leaving, which, you know, it's fine by me. We're never going to use him. So getting him out of the club, freeing up that wage, making sure that, you know, he's out of the club. We don't have to worry about him anymore. We're not thinking, oh, we're getting a, a central midfielder back. Are we going to have to use him in preseason? Do we have to consider playing him to raise his value? We bought him for 40 million in 2017, and I don't think we'll get anything near that. 
um, for him now, but the club are just going to have to take this one at a loss and accept that they made a very bad decision in signing Bakayoko. So that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Let me know what you thought on this one. The three departures, Moses, Emerson, Bakayoko, and then, of course, us not going for uh, Kane and Haaland and going to pick up Lewandowski instead. I think that is a pretty good one. And then, of course, the centre-back that apparently is going to be the next Thiago Silva. If you know more, please, as I mentioned, let us know down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, guys. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe so you stay up to date with all my videos, and I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye.